Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back to Dr. Han's classroom. So if you follow the vaccine news this past week, you would have heard Pfizer is planning to seek authorizations for their booster dose. Of the COVID vaccine, now the FDA and the CDC responded very quickly and say no, not this time. Now this week we are going to look at the Pfizer press statement and scientifically break it down of why Uncle Sam is not agreeing with Pfizer this time. First, we need to understand where the CDC stands. During the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practice (ACIP) meeting back on June 23rd, Dr. Sarah Oliver stated that the need for a booster shot is either having evidence of declining vaccine effectiveness and not only based on mining antibody response. Or when there is a variant that is substantially escaping the protection from the vaccine, have any of these situations happened yet? The short answer is not yet, and let's look at the facts. Fact number one: antibodies from two doses of the Pfizer vaccine are very strong. So, in the recent Pfizer statement, the company quoted a study. Published in Nature, it tested antibodies elicited from their vaccine and how well they perform against different variants. The in vitro study clearly demonstrated that the antibodies can still neutralize all of the tested pseudovirus variants. Now, although there is some job in neutralizing the B one six one seven point one or the Kappa variant, none of the tested variants had escaped the antibodies completely. Fact number two: Winding antibodies happen to all infections. We know that winding in antibodies happens to all infections, but that does not mean we are not protected from the infectious organism. But if we narrowly only focus on the COVID discussion, another paper published in the Nature Medicine looked at the effect of winding neutralization antibody titers on protection. Their models predicted that the protection level is dependent on the initial efficacy, or in other words, the higher the initial efficacy, the lesser the drop when the winding happens. And let's take a look of how good is the Pfizer COVID vaccine. In fact, both Phase Three and real-world data from Israel showed that the overall efficacy is over ninety percent. And if we apply the Pfizer efficacy into this model, and we only count antibody immunity. And we know there's more to that. We could get an estimated effectiveness of at least 80% after six months of the second dose. And fact number three, Delta is not escaping the vaccine completely. And to be honest, I am completely baffled by all the self-contradictory sentences in the Pfizer statement, where they said they believe their vaccine works well, but it's still good to have another shot. Now, Pfizer did reference the Delta variant and its infection trend happening in Israel, and that's the need to drive for a booster dose. Now, the company used Israel as the real-world reference because the country only gave the Pfizer vaccine to its people. But let's look at what is happening elsewhere in the world. And here we have a summary of multiple studies that have shown that the real-world efficacy of various vaccines still works well against the Delta variant, in particular preventing hospitalization, and most importantly, it works to protect against severe diseases. And in the UK, the Public Health England analyzed Delta variant cases between April 12 and June 6, and they find out after two doses of the AstraZeneca vaccines, there is a 92% effectiveness to prevent hospitalization, and after two doses of the Pfizer BNT vaccine, there is a 96% effectiveness to prevent hospitalization as well. And fact number four: antibodies are not. All the protection we have, 
And by now, I think many of you, many of my viewers, are already aware that we also have cytotoxic T cells in our adaptive immune system to fight virus infected cell. Not only that, we also have memory T cells and memory B cells, where they can respond very quickly to subsequent encounters of the same infectious organism. Although it is more challenging to study T cell immunity, that doesn't mean we have no ideas. And here is a study that came out in 2017, summarized all of the T cell studies related to patients recovered from the SARS infection back in 2003. In the study, they find that the T cell is still detectable even after 12 years of post infection from the original SARS. And if you want to learn more about the different types of immune cells in the adaptive immune system, you can check out this one minute short and brief video that provides a concise quick summary. I'll provide the link in the description box down below and at the end of this video. And fact number five, who could potentially be benefited most from the booster dose? A few weeks ago, I talked about how immunocompromised patients reacted with the vaccine. And in general, they reacted poorly in immunocompromised patients. So these people may be benefited from the booster dose. And if you want to learn more about that video content, the link is also in the description box down below. And let's look at what other countries is doing. And since April, France has handed out boosters to cancer patients and others with immune system deficiency. And the UK is also planning to give the booster dose to people over 70 years old, healthcare workers, and immunocompromised patients. And here in the US, the ACIP will also meet on July 22nd to discuss if the booster dose is suitable for people with weakened immune systems. So I understand how everybody thinks about the profits behind all the vaccines. Now, if we remove the dollar sign or the money factor in our discussions, like a few of you have already mentioned in my post a few days ago, that shouldn't we really consider giving the vaccine to people who are really in need of it when those people don't even have any vaccines then to boost the level of antibodies in people who are already being protected to a good degree. And these are the questions I think we need to consider. And lastly, I want to emphasize that I do not have any affiliations with the industry or the government. And the purpose for this channel is to educate everybody with scientific facts that are related to COVID and other health science topic. And I also read all of the comments you post down there and I try to respond it either through post or with a new video. But remember, I only do it one time a week. so it takes some time to respond to all of your comments. So if you want to follow more on scientific facts, please consider hitting the subscribe button and this channel need your help to reach more people. And that is all for this week. And meanwhile, please stay safe and healthy. Bye.